Dear students, I am Dr. Y. P. Agarwal, Professor Emeritus, Kurukshetra University. We are going to discuss with you a module on two-way or double classification analysis of variance. The objectives of this module are the students will be able to learn about two-way factorial designs and they will be also able to learn about rationale and calculation of two-way ANOVA. The statistical control versus experimental control will also be explained. Dear students, now I am going to explain to you the technique of two-way analysis of variance. In experiments, more than one experimental factor or one experimental factor and one or more control factors may be used. For example, in a field experiment, three different methods of teaching, program learning, multimedia and traditional method may be tried out as an experimental factor. At the same time, two different teachers, teacher factor may be used as control factor. Thus, we have three levels of method factor and two levels of teacher factor and there are in all three times two is equal to six combinations of these two factors. This three by two factorial design depending upon the number of factors and the number of levels of each factor, several variations of the factorial designs are possible. This module only two-way or double classification analysis will be presented. The hypothetical data already used in one-way analysis of variance in table one has been once again used by designated a second factor of teacher. The three sets of scores have been designated as program learning M1, multimedia M2 and traditional method as M3 the two levels of the teacher factor as teacher 1 that's T1 and teacher 2 as T2. Now the factorial designs and mathematical model. Take a look at this. We have three levels of methods M1, M2 and M3 and on the left we have two levels of teacher, teacher 1, teacher 2 or T1, T2 and within this small diagram we have M1, T1, M2, T1, M3, T1, and M1, T2, M2, T2, M3, T2. The mathematical model for this example will be X or any score is equal to mu plus deviations due to method plus deviations due to teacher plus deviations due to the combined effect of M and T plus the error effect in which symbols are x any raw score, mu population mean or grand mean, dm stands for deviation due to method factor, dt stands for deviation due to teacher factor, dm deviation due to combined effect of m and t or interaction of m and t and e stands for the random error. In verbal expression any raw score is a combination of the population mean here grand mean plus variation due to method factor plus variation due to teacher factor plus variation due to the combined effect of method and teacher factors plus random error due to sampling fluctuations. This model can be further extended to three factors or larger factorial designs. The model makes it obvious that the various effects are additive and through a process of analysis variance due to various factors can be separated and determined and tested for significance. The population mean mu is the grand mean of the scores empirically obtained and is a constant value and thus does not contribute to any variation in the data. The procedure of calculation of various effects in the two-way ANOVA is illustrated in a table. The notation for the purpose is also given therein. The student should be able to calculate and identify various sums of scores and sums of squared scores which are required in the further calculation of sums of squares. Now number one, sums of method factor. Sigma x m1 is equal to 60, sigma x m2 is equal to 30, sigma x m3 is equal to 90, and total is 180. Sum of teacher factors. 
sigma x t1 is equal to 94, sigma x t2 is equal to 86 and total is 180. And then you come to the sum of cells that is the interaction that is method times teacher sigma x m1 t1 is equal to 37, sigma x m1 t2 is equal to 23, sigma x m2 t1 is equal to 15, sigma x m2 t2 is equal to 15, sigma x m3 t1 is equal to 42, sigma x m3 t2 is equal to 48, the total for this section is 180. This gives me the sum of cells for the interaction method times teacher. Sum of squared scores. Now we have sigma x1 square plus sigma x2 square plus dash 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 plus sigma x n square. That gives me 10 square plus 7 square plus dash 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 plus 10 square and total is 1402. Sum of squares now. Correction term c is equal to 1 upon n times sigma x whole square is equal to t square upon n is equal to 180 square upon 30 and that is 1080. Now we calculate the total sum of squares and the formula for this is sigma x square minus correction. SS total is equal to 10 square plus 7 square plus 6 square plus 10 square plus dash 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 plus 9 square plus 12 square plus 9 square plus 10 square minus correction that is 1080. That gives me 322 as the value. Now we calculate the sum of squares between cells and this is a SS teacher times method is equal to summation now in brackets summation x mt whole square upon n minus correction and the values are 37 square plus 15 square plus 42 square plus 23 square plus 15 square plus 48 square whole divided by 5 minus 1080 and further calculations give me 1369 plus 225 plus 1764 plus 529 plus 225 plus 2304 whole upon 5 minus 1080 and the final value is 203.2. Now we come to the calculation of sum of squares between rows that is teacher. SS teacher is equal to sum of summation xt whole square upon n times m minus c and the values are 94 square plus 86 square upon 5 times 3 minus 1080 is equal to 1082.133 minus 1080 is equal to 2.133. Now we come to the calculation of sum of squares for interaction and this is shown here SS teacher times method is equal to SS dot method minus SS teacher minus SS method and the values are 203.2 minus 2.133 minus 180 and further we get the final value which is 21.067. Now we come to the sum of squares within cells. This we get simply by subtraction and this is sum of squares is equal to sum SS total minus SS teacher times method. This 322 minus 203.2 and the final value is 118.8. Have everything at a glance, we come to the summary of Nelson's of variance. This table has six columns. First column is source of variation, then, then the degrees of freedom, then SS, then MS, F, and then the significance of the F. And the values shown here are T minus 1 is equal to 1, 2.133 is the SS, MS is 2.133, F value is 0 0.431 and this is not significant 
because it says n s for method factor m minus 1 degrees of freedom are 2 s s 180 m s 90 and the value of f is 18.182 and significance is 0 0.01 level. Hence, this value of f is significant at, at 0 0.01 level. The interaction value again we come to degrees of freedom t minus 1 times m minus 1 gives me 2. SS is 21.067, MS is 10.534 and F is 2.128. This is not significant and within is Tm times n minus 1 that is 24 and the SS is 118.8495 and the total is degrees of freedom 29 and SS is 322.00. Now, calculation of F values are like this. For teacher, we divide MS teacher by MS within and we get the value 0.431. For method, we divide MS method by MS within. We get the value 18.182. For interaction, we divide MS interaction by MS within we get the final value as 2.12 as shown in the above table. Now, I come to the interpretation. To determine the significance of these f values, we have to consult the table of f values given in the appendix and use the appropriate degrees of freedom. The following values have been obtained. For df 1 and 24, value of f to be significant at 0 0.05 level 4.26 and at 0 0.01 level we need 7.82. Similarly, for df equal to 2 to 24, value of f to be significant we need 3.40 at 0 0.05 level and 5.61 as at 0 0.01 level. In the last column of the table of summary of ANOVA, the interpretation of the f values has been given. The teacher factor and the interaction are not significant, that is n s, while only the method factor is significant at 0 0.01 level. Hence, the three methods have been found to be significantly different in their effects on the criterion scores. This result is consistent with the one obtained in one way ANOVA problem presented in a previous section. Now, I am going to explain to you the computation of two way ANOVA. The procedure of calculating various effects in two way ANOVA is illustrated in a table. The notation for the purpose is also given therein. The student should be able to calculate and identify various sums of scores and sums of squared scores which are required in the further calculation of sums of squares SS and sums of square methods factor. Dear students, now you will be able to see the effect of the introduction of a second factor. Since the data used in the one way ANOVA problem was repeated here by introducing a second factor of teacher and thus increasing the number of cells from 3 to 6, a comparison of the sums of squares obtained in the two situations will be revealing. However, selection of the additional factor for introduction in this experiment should be done carefully. Otherwise, a lot of labor and expenses will be lost. Only those factors which have a known relationship with the criterion may be used for the purpose. Now, we come to the assumptions underlying analysis of variance. As in the case of all parametric statistical tests in the mathematical development of the analysis of variance, a number of assumptions have been made. It is important to take a look at the procedure of collecting data and the nature of the distribution of the data obtained before taking a decision to use this technique. Normally, the data should satisfy the following assumptions. Number one, normality of distribution, the dependent variable in the population from which the samples have been drawn should be normally distributed. Generally, a test of goodness of fit is used to ascertain the 
fulfillment of this prerequisite violation of this assumption will make the results somewhat more significant than they actually are. However, this efficiency can be made up by using a somewhat more rigorous level of confidence than usual. In case of very large n, near normality may be obtained without much difficulty, that of homogeneity of variance. Homogeneity of variance means that the variances in the different sets of scores do not differ beyond chance. The HO is equal to the variance 1 is equal to variance 2 is equal to dash 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 is equal to variance k is generally tested by using either Hartley's procedure or Bartlett's test. Grass departures from homogeneity may lead to results which are seriously in error. However, mild departures from homogeneity of variance may not affect the results much. Transformation of scores to generate homogeneity or the use of a non-parametric test instead of ANOVA are generally recommended to avoid the violation of these assumptions. Now, another assumption is of additivity of effects. As stated in an earlier section, the basic model of ANOVA states that a given observation is composed of certain components, each due to the effect of a particular identifiable source of variation. In most cases, this assumption is generally met. Then we have the assumption of random sampling. The sampling within the various sets should be random. It usually means that observations are mutually independent and with equal chance of selection. Now, we are going to discuss the table that shows one-way ANOVA results and results of two-way ANOVA. And you will see that the two tables, they are slightly different from each other. And in this case, one-way ANOVA has between sets or method factor and within factor in total. And the two-way ANOVA table has methods, teacher, interaction, within and total. Now, the following observations can be easily made. The SS for method factor that's between sets remains the same in both the situations. The SS for within in the one-way situation has been further broken down into three components, SS for teacher, SS for interaction, and SS within. If we add up these three sums of squares for the two-way situation, we obtain a value equal to the SS within of the one-way ANOVA. Addition of a second or further factors leads to the reduction of the values of SS within and consequently of error variance. Since the error variance is the denominator of the F ratio, the values of F will go up and thus increase the likelihood of the rejection of the null hypothesis. Then further, the SS total remains the same in both the situations. Furthermore, the reduction in error variance increases the precision of the experimental results. Another thing is the degrees of freedom for within variance in the one-way problem have also been shared by the additional factor of teacher interaction and within. In the two-way problem, the total DF remains the same in both these situations. Dear students, so far we have taken a look at the procedure of two-way analysis of variance. We have also taken a look at the model that we have used for this. And then the results of the two-way analysis of variance have been interpreted. This is a highly useful method for research and other various purposes, especially for experimental research. The student, however, should take due precautions when he decides to use this method because there are certain assumptions of this method. Hence, the student should do this method very carefully. Thank you.